this is John Cullen with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm going to take you guys along how I make a smoothie these days. You know, I've been into a raw food diet now for 26 years. I've gone the gamut and made all kinds of thousands of different smoothies across all the years that I've been being raw. And I want to show you guys seven ways how you guys can improve and make your banana smoothie even healthier. I've experimented with many different style raw food diets, like a high fruit diet, a little bit higher fat, higher greens diet, over all these years. And I continually take different tidbits of information from different raw food camps, whether that's an 80-10-10 camp, or a Hippocrates style diet, or a Brian Clement style, or a Lou Corona style. Everybody has their style, and I pick tidbits out of the different raw food styles as well as incorporating some plant-based styles such as Dr. Joel Furman's Nutritarian Diet to come up with what I have today and I can honestly tell you guys that I feel better and I'm performing better than ever based on what I'm doing. I know a lot of you guys might be blasting down basically bananas, water, and date smoothies every day with 30 bananas in it, maybe at least 10 or a dozen, right? And I would encourage you guys to watch this video and maybe take some tips from what I'm doing. Maybe you don't have to implement all these things to the crazy level that I do, but even if you just change up one or two things, you can make your smoothie a lot healthier. And in my opinion, in the long run, you will be healthier because of it, right? I've learned a lot of things over my journey as a raw foodist over the last 26 years. And that's why I'm here to share with you guys today because you're literally not going to hear the information that I share on any other channel because nobody else has my level of experience and my exact experience <laughs> unless I have a clone, <laughs> all right? So with that, let's go ahead and get into the seven ways to make your banana smoothie even healthier. All right, first tip I got for you guys is most of you guys might use tap water to make your banana smoothie. I would never encourage you guys to use tap water. I would encourage you guys to use at least minimally filtered water and my kind of water that I drink these days is distilled water. That being said, my goal is to not drink any water. I might drink a liter a day at this time, but my goal is to get my hydration from juices and other fruits and vegetables. So if you're not using water to make your smoothie, what are you going to use to make it? Well, you could use some kind of juice, and I've done that before, like a nice orange juice or other kind of juice. I use sugarcane juice when I have that often. But today what I'll be doing is I'm going to be using coconut water so coconuts are a rich source of electrolytes these are the white mexican coconuts the kind i'd like to normally get for water you could also get the thai coconuts you could even use coconut water out of a package if you you know want to bend the raw food rules a little bit or even if you're not raw that'd be great just make sure you get a coconut water that is a hundred percent coconut because a lot of coconut waters may add preservatives even extra sugar which i think is a scam so we're going to go ahead and take our coconut water. Now the reason why coconut water is so good for us is because it has electrolytes in there, like minerals, that are in a plant absorbable form or human absorbable form, right? Minerals in the water are in a non-easily absorbable form, whereas minerals from plants that have been converted by the plant are more easily assimilated. In addition, there's also vitamins and phytonutrients such as plant cytokines that are in the coconut so that it could float across the ocean, land on a distant land and sprout up on the beach. And in my opinion, uh, you will get some of those longevity benefits from the coconut water as well. Tip number two is something that you guys definitely are not hearing pretty much anywhere else on any raw foods channel except for one or two aside from my channel. And that is instead of just using a standard blender, I know most of you guys own Vitamixes, right? Don't use a traditional blender that will blend in oxygen into your smoothie. This makes a smoothie taste horrible, right? It makes it taste foamy. It makes it taste, makes the nutrition go down and it makes the flavor go down as well. Um, unless you'd like drinking head on a beer, you know, that's all foam, right? Check a video that I did recently with Lissa and Nate on the Raw Food Romance channel, link down below to the video, where you could see three raw foodists in that video taste testing different concoctions and smoothies and recipes we made under vacuum and not to get our honest opinions. Seriously guys, vacuum blending is a game changer because really what you're doing is you're removing the excess oxygen out of the craft before you blend so when the cells are being blown open with the blades at high speed over 200 miles an hour in a Vitamix, you know, you're not 
bombarding it with all this air and oxygen, right? And that's what the vacuum pump does. So I'm using uh, the best uh, vacuum blender that I sell at Discount Juices and all the different ones that I've tested. It has a full 15 year warranty, which is the longest warranty in the industry. And it is comparable in performance to a Vitamix. That being said, I know a lot of you guys, if you guys have a Vitamix, you shouldn't necessarily just buy this one because there's an option for you guys that's now available. And what it is, is you can get a brand new vacuum carafe with a special vacuum pump from BioChef. And this will fit right on top of your base of your Vitamix. And now you can vacuum blend in your Vitamix. This is a game changing appliance, guys. Seriously, link down below to the video that I did with Lissa from Raw Food Romance. You could learn all about it. Or even check my Discount Juicer channel for a video I made on there as well. And I'll have a video on this channel with Lissa and Nate uh, coming up in maybe a couple episodes. But yeah, this is a game changer. I would encourage you guys, if you guys don't do anything else, but just get a new blender craft for your Vitamix, get this vacuum blender craft. That's a huge improvement, even if you don't even incorporate anything else just for your bananas and dates and water. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't recommend drinking that anyways, but uh, let's move on. Third tip is to add berries to your banana smoothie. Why berries? Well, I made an Instagram post today um, at Growing Your Greens where I talk about, you know, why I am adding berries when I make my banana ice cream or banana sorbet. Most people use 100% bananas. I crank down seven bananas frozen and get them into them. That's great. So what I'm doing, I take half bananas so I get that nice creamy texture and then a quarter I take wild blueberries that I'll show you in a second and also I take some a quarter of the dragon fruit organic um, and then mix that up with my banana ice cream but you could likewise do that to your banana smoothies right uh, berries and today I have frozen berries we got some frozen wild blueberries here and the best place to buy these are actually at Trader Joe's uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and add some of these in Blueberries, just standard blueberries, and not even wild blueberries. Wild blueberries are the healthiest blueberry you could buy because they're more wild and they have less sugar and more purple anthocyanin content. But compared to bananas, berries have about 10 times more um, polyphenol content, which are plant chemicals or phytonutrients, if you want to call them that. Now, there's no RDA for phytochemicals. I'll be straight up with you guys. So somebody might make a video. You don't need phytochemicals, John. The US RDA says we don't even need them. It's not even considered a nutrient. Well, to me, it is a micronutrient. And to thrive in the long run, it is my belief based on the science I've seen that these polyphenols and other phytonutrients and phytochemicals are quite beneficial for health. And it would behoove you to add them into your diet now. That's why I'm making this video for you guys. So you guys could do that if you want. If you don't, if you think I'm hogwash, keep making your banana smoothies, but at least minimally <laughs> vacuum blend it. All right, so the other thing I'm gonna use also another very nutritious fruit um, because it's purple. I really love my purple fruits are the purple dragon fruits. And actually this stuff is available at Costco and we're actually almost out, so I'm just gonna use the rest. Now besides the dragon fruit, you could also use something like tart cherries or frozen cherries also usually available at Costco um, for with the organic fruit. This will basically up the level of the uh, polyphenols in your smoothie. Plus, in addition, if you guys can't find frozen fruit, you could always in a pinch use dried powdered fruit. So actually this is from a farm, Wilt Farms in Carvallis, Oregon. And actually this is the most nutritious berry of the standard berries, this is actually uh, black raspberries uh, powder that have been basically dried. So we're gonna add that in there. Now very important, a tip that you guys may not know is that to get optimal uptake of the anthocyanins in your berries, you wanna make sure you eat it with protein. You know, otherwise you're not gonna get all the uptake, as high of an uptake of the anthocyanins and probably other polyphenols in there as proven by science. And that brings me to tip number four is I want you guys to add fresh greens to your banana smoothies. So today, here's a whole big bowl of greens I fresh picked from my garden, including uh, wild stinging nettles that I grow in my garden, as well as um, some mint. And I just basically plucked off the tops of all this. And this is a lot 
of leafy greens. So we're going to literally cram that in there. Now, you know, eating the leafy greens with the berries is something very smart to do because the leafy greens have good levels of protein. If you think, where's a cow get its protein? Well, hopefully it's eating grass or other greenery and not just eating GMO corn and soy like many feedlot, uh, you know, animals do. And that's how we could literally get a lot of protein in us as well as you know leaves especially green leafy vegetables whether you're using kale stinging nettle mint herbs or otherwise you know are a very nutrient dense food they have very few calories but a lot of different vitamins and minerals and other micronutrients and phytochemicals that are essential for us now the funny thing is i'm getting a little bit stung <laughs> putting in the stinging nettle <laughs> i didn't get this stung when i was harvesting them Tip number five is to grow it yourself, whether that means you grow your own bananas and berries, or like in my case, I grow my own greens. Actually, that's the name of my YouTube channel, Growing Your Greens. If you guys want to learn how to grow your own food, I encourage you guys to grow your own food. This way you have fresher quality food. Literally this mint here that I'm using today is still growing. I'm literally plucking it off and I'm gonna go ahead and collect a whole bowl of this along with some other greens um, to use in my banana smoothie today to make it more nutrient dense. Now fresh greens are more nutritious than greens you'd buy at your grocery store. How often you go to buy mint at your grocery store and it's like withered and wilted and just not looking good, right? That food is not high vibrancy. It does not contain the high levels of vitamins, minerals, and more importantly phytochemicals that they could have if you grew it yourself. Mint is very easy to grow. You could grow it in a container this is one four foot raised bed that just has nothing but mint in here. Uh, lots of mint. It can definitely take over an area. It's super simple to grow. So anytime I want a minty fresh breath smoothie, I just got to come to my backyard and pick it. So if you can't have your own garden, then I would recommend go to Wild Forage uh, Weeds. There are many edible weeds that can be used and eaten raw. The one I'll be showing you guys today actually grows in my garden because I grow it purposely in my garden, but it also is a weed. Uh, this is actually known as stinging nettles. And the stinging nettles, they have little stingers on them, but I just basically pick a whole bunch of the leaves, even just like the, the tops of the whole um, stinging nettle, just like this, and this will all go in to my smoothie. It is said that stinging nettle is probably one of the most nutritious wild greens you can eat, so I'd encourage you guys to seek it out and find some. So besides the mint and the stinging nettle, I grow many other greens in my garden, including beet greens that you guys can't see, but also things like dinosaur kale. When you grow your own food, you get to choose when you want to harvest it. When you pick it, it's picked fresher. More importantly, you could add nutrients in the soil that even organic farmers are not, such as trace minerals, and as well as other beneficial microbes, fungi, and bacteria that will allow your plants to be more phytonutrient dense than just grocery store food would. I think I'm going to go ahead and collect a bunch of my greens. Today I'm actually just doing straight stinging nettle with a bunch of mint uh, because I got to harvest my stinging nettle because it's getting cut down today. And um, I got to harvest a lot of mint because I have so much mint. And I want to encourage you guys, as you'll learn in a second, to use your herbs, flavorful herbs, in your green smoothies. They're quite high in antioxidants. Oh, and special shout out to the red vegetables. So try to find red leaf kale instead of the standard green kale, red leaf lettuce, red mustard greens, or bok choy. They're a lot more nutritious than the standard green varieties. The sixth tip is I want you guys to add green powders to your smoothies. You know, as much as I use fresh greens, I can't grow all the different kinds of green vegetables in the world in my garden, especially with a limited space. Maybe if I had a larger acreage, I would be able to grow a lot more. But even then, you can't grow certain greens depending on your geographic location that may limit you from growing some tropicals or things that like colder weather if you're in a warm weather climate and that's why I encourage you guys to use something like green powders. This is my favorite green powder, Vita Mineral Green, because not only does it just have like wheatgrass powder or barley grass powder, it has spirulina and chlorella and all different kinds of greens in there uh, so that you could get a wider variety. It's my opinion that a wider variety of foods will provide you more different micronutrients and trace minerals and more importantly, um, unique types of fiber to feed your microbiome. So we're just gonna go ahead and take this and 
looked up a whole bunch in. I know some people really like barley grass powder. I have barley grass powder also, wheat grass powder, whatever green powders you guys could source, add it and do it. It'll elevate your banana smoothie. Seventh and final tip before we add the bananas and get to blending is I want you guys to spice it up. Spice up your smoothie using some herbs and spices. You know, earlier I put in fresh mint. I like to use fresh herbs whenever I can, but you should also use dried herbs. Many dried herbs are very high in polyphenols and other antioxidants and phytonutrients. So one of my favorite um, herbs to use or flavorings is whole vanilla beans. So we're just going to go ahead and put that in there. This is from the Tahitian Vanilla Company and they're my favorite vanilla brand to get my whole beans from. That's the only company I use to get them. You can also put in like cloves, like little pieces of clove or clove powder. Today I'm also adding some cinnamon powder. Cinnamon is an amazing uh, spice. Once again, highly antioxidant rich and of course smells so good especially with the holidays upon us you could add some holiday seasoning now finally I'm gonna add some bananas in there I got four small bananas in here to add and I you know usually like to use a combination of fresh bananas and frozen bananas but I don't happen to have any fresh bananas today because I actually don't purchase them too much because I I much rather eat you know persimmons or berries or something else other than bananas in my daily life but I always like to have some in the freezer now I do encourage you guys also with this kit and this vacuum pump you can get these special bags that you can literally suck out the extra oxygen out of the bag with this pump and what that does this will store your bananas uh, under vacuum so that you don't get the massive branding you normally would get now here's one tip is you want to only pack as many bananas you're going to use in one serving you know what I did was I filled this all up with bananas and then every time I used it I took it out took some out unvacuumed it and then revacuumed it and that doesn't work as well as if you just vacuum just four for this smoothie four for the next smoothie and you know four and you use four every time because every time you let the air in it's going to cause more oxidation all right so we're going to go ahead and open this up and take out my frozen bananas all four of them and put them in the blender craft as you can see i loaded the liquid up first followed by the berries uh, followed by the greens and then bananas on top so that it weighs down the greens to push them into the blender. The, the final step is just to simply blend. So we're just going to go ahead and put this lid on the top and make sure we're fully sealed down. We're just going to go ahead and take this automatic vacuum pump, put it on the top, and we're going to press the button. The pump's going to come on, and what's happening is if you guys look closely down there, you can see the air bubbles being sucked out of the bottom it's evacuating all the extra air from the air bubbles and the liquid but also all the air space in between the greens and the bananas and everywhere so we will blend under vacuum without the added oxygen so once the vacuum pump shuts off we can go ahead and remove it and on the Dyna Pro, it's basically a one touch operation we just gotta press the um we're going to press the blend button twice. That'll run it for a minute to get this well blended. Now, I would encourage you guys to run the blender as a, for a shortest as possible amount of time just to get everything fractionated up and do not over blend. That can affect the nutrient content. All right, I think we needed about 45 seconds to get that mixture blended up. As you guys can see, we're fully blended. Now we can press a little tab on this vacuum blender. I want you guys to listen carefully and watch the level of the smoothie. The smoothie level drops down. We let all the air in. And now we can go ahead and lift off the top. And we have one delicious banana smoothie that's actually <laughs> quite purple. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try this. Mm-mm. That's a very interesting smoothie. So I really taste like, I taste the texture of the stingy nettles because it's more of a like fibrous leafy green. I really get the hint of mint and I'm really tasting the berries with, you know, subtle banana back flavor. Uh, the bananas in it to me are giving it that nice creamy shake-like consistency that wouldn't necessarily happen if you just did straight berries. So this is my 
improved banana smoothie and I encourage you guys to use some of these seven tips the next time you guys make your banana smoothie to increase its health ability so you guys could eat healthier and more plant phytonutrients that I believe to be critical for your health. If you guys enjoyed this short episode, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also more importantly, please be sure to share this video around with others so that they could also supercharge their banana smoothies and we can make the world healthier one person at a time. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss my new and upcoming episodes I come in every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the little bell to get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to teach you guys all about how to eat more fresh fruits and fresh vegetables in your diet because they are some of the healthiest foods on the entire planet. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.